How's it going, everybody? It's your boy Caesar with Caesar Gets Crypto here. We are going to talk about a couple of things today. I'm going to show, let's see, we're going to take this off. We're going to squeeze it. I want to talk about the RSI today. I have a couple things brought up, and I feel like I, feel like I went into too much detail in my last video, so I'm, I'm going to try to keep this one short and concise, okay? The last video I had, I was talking about the, the 10 RSI. This one, however, is the 123. Um, it's not my last video, my second to last video, actually. But let's say you're new to TradingView. You've never done this before. You don't have any indicators brought up. I do have indicators brought up. I have the, the volume and the MA here. But let's say you want to bring up the RSI. You go to indicators. You click on not favorites, not my scripts. You, tech, you click, click on technicals. Scroll all the way down to R, relative strength index. Here we are. It brings this default RSI out to you. This default comes with an RSI MA. I don't like it personally. So the way to change it is you can do, you can click on this, go to settings. It'll bring up this little taskbar or format sheet. I don't know what to call that. Or you can just double click the RSI itself. I am going to take off the MA. You can see the yellow line goes away whenever I click it on, click it off. I'm going to change the color here to orange because I feel like that stands out more against the purple backdrop. Why would you have purple on purple? I, I don't get it, but that's the format they like to have. You could choose white, you could choose gray, whatever. You know what? Let's do white. It looks fun. Let's do it. Let's do white today. Um, inputs. I'm going to make it a long-term RSI. Most people, and, and I'm not saying that people don't use long-term RSIs. I've, I've just never seen it happen before, but I'm not saying that it's not something that people do. But, but personally, to, to my knowledge, I've never actually seen anybody use it. Most people use short-term RSIs. The default is 14. I've seen professionals, experts have their own, uh, or, or at least they, they suggest that they have their own metrics for the RSI. They won't tell you what those are unless you pay for their classes. I'm just telling you right now, I use the 123 and the 10, okay? I don't know which ones they use, um, but the 14 is the default. If you look up relative strength index, you can go to the calculation on how to calculate the RSI. It talks about the 14 period. You know, that's just a default setting. You don't have to use that. You don't have to use that. You can, you know, mess around with it. See see if your chart, if your, uh, whatever you're looking at can, can better fit different parameters. To be fair, I do like to use two RSIs. I do like to use two of them. I like to have a short-term uh, short RSI and a long-term RSI on. Um, but for today's video, I talked about, yesterday I talked about the short-term RSI. So for today's video, I am gonna not have the short-term RSI on there. And I really wanna talk about the relationship to the long-term RSI and that it has with this 123 MA. You can see it's 123 MA, 123 RSI. Let's just type in, 123 significance, significance. Let's see if there's any significance, what the internet has to tell us, whatever. If you are single and 120, 123 appears to you, you're thinking about finding a partner. It represents a pathway to companionship, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's, that's a little dating thing, whatever. Really what this is saying is that it's the beginning of something. It's the beginning of something. One, two, three, the beginning, right? It's just, it's a numerical thing that exists in the universe. And whether you think it's foo-foo nonsense or not, all things begin at zero and they start at one, two, three, four. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the beginning sequence of anything. And maybe it's foo nonsense. Maybe it's not, whatever. You know, here it says it's a very positive upward moving number that often is considered for a good sign. In terms of love, soulmates, whatever. You know, I don't necessarily believe in all that stuff. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Um, some people do believe in numerology. I, I do to a certain degree, but, uh, and I am a hippie at heart, but, but I don't necessarily believe in all that. The reason why I do like the 123, I mean, we could just, we can look at it, for example, okay? You can see here, we found direct support off this. We bounced directly off of it, okay? We came up, came down, tested it, literally tipped it as resistance, okay? Sure, sure here, this wick went all the way above it, but we closed below it. We closed actually like right at it. And it wasn't until we started closing above it that we got some more bullish price action. And we were, we were above it for a little bit, closed below it. We flirted with this line a little bit. But once we broke above it indefinitely, it was off to the races, off to the races. Once we broke below it, we were at the bottom. And that, that's something else I want to point out, actually. For, for Bitcoin, at least, every chart's different. But for Bitcoin, at least, when you get below this line, we're pretty close to the bottom. In 2015, you could have bought the all-time low at one, or not the all-time low, but the session lows at 167. You could have bought the highs up here at 311. You know, that's a, that's a pretty big, significant difference, honestly. That's, you know, it's less than 100%, but that's like an 80% difference, 90% difference. Um, 
But if you bought anywhere below this line, you could have sold it. I mean, you could have sold it halfway up and made a killing. You could have sold it near the top and made an extra killing. You buy it below this line again, boom, you're at the bottoming points. Boom, you're at the bottoming points. Boom, we're at the bottoming points. I'm not saying that we're at the lows, that we've hit the lows yet, but I'm saying that we're there. And I'm not talking about the MA. That's not something that I just want to talk about. I was kind of showing the significance of 123. And in my opinion, there's no denying that it's significant. Um, you can see here even, like, look at look at how it's holding this as resistance, like very fine resistance. We break above it and boom, it's onto the races. We're holding it as resistance. We break above it, boom, it's onto the races. We break below it, sucks a dick. Break above it, boom, onto the races. Break below it, hold it as resistance, sucks a dick. You know, like it's... it find significance. I'm sorry for my language for all my people who hate that kind of language. I'll try to tone it back a little bit. Did I mention that today's attitude is brought to you by Boochcraft Kombucha? It's pretty good. Anyways, um, it's a 7% drink. It's, it's pretty nice. It doesn't taste bad. It's organic. It's good shit. Um, good stuff. So if we look at the RSI, this is, we're just going to click on the RSI for now. You know, price is here. I'm going to double click trading view to bring up just the RSI. We're on the weekly basis, the W, one week. And we can see, if we zoom out here, that Bitcoin has actually, and this is for the Bitcoin chart, BTC USD, BTC USD index. We've actually never been this low in the RSI before. Not, not on this RSI, not on the 123. We've never been this low before. We've never been oversold before. I don't think we're going into oversold territories now. We could, uh, that would suck. Just, just so you know, like a long-term RSI like this, if we were to go to the oversold territories, Bitcoin would be well below probably $7,000. It would suck. It would suck a big one. It can happen. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Some people might think, oh, we're at the lowest point in the RSI that Bitcoin's ever been. Must be time to buy, right? No, no, no. I mean, it's, it's, that's the right thinking to a certain degree. But remember what this is. It's the relative strength index. Right now, we are showing the lowest reads, aka the weakest price action, right? Relative strength index. If this is measuring the strength relative to the price, we are experiencing right now the weakest price action that Bitcoin has ever seen. And generally, when you're up here, when you're showing the strongest readings, you're getting the strongest moves, right? You're getting the strongest moves when you're the strongest stuff strong moves when you're in the upper echelons now that we're below the 50 on the rsi we're below the 50 we've confirmed it as resistance for the first time ever in its history we are arguably going to see some of the weakest moves that we've ever seen in bitcoin's history and i think it's evident i think it's actually very evident you can see here on these bounces we got from i mean we, we dropped all the way down from twenty thousand all the way down to six thousand. that's that's a huge drop that's a very weak move but we bounced up still. We bounced up. You know, we showed strength from six thousand almost to twelve thousand dollars. That 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 was a hundred percent bounce. That's a strong bounce. Came back down to about six thousand. Bounced back up to ten thousand. Those are strong moves happening. You know, and we're in the strong territory. We're still above the fifty. We got some weaker moves, sure. As we got closer to the fifty, we definitely did. We actually even found the bottom right around there. Um, and you can see anytime anytime we're below. I think I already said this. Uh, anytime we're below this this MA, we we find the bottoms. What's really nice about this is when we're below the MA, if the RSI holds this 50 level, this is where the relation comes in handy with both of these, the 123 MA and the 123 RSI. I'm going to take that away. The relationship is if we're below this MA but above the 50 on the RSI, it's go time, baby. It's not it's not going to be forever that we're down here. Below the MA, above the 50 on the RSI, it's go time, baby. Below the MA, bouncing off the 50 on the RSI, it's fucking go time. You know what I mean? But for once in its history, we're below this R, we're below the MA. We've bounced off the 50 on the RSI. This does not look like go time. This does not look good. And we're showing weakness. We are showing weakness, without a doubt. Being the lowest that we've ever been is not not necessarily a good thing. We're we're at the weakest points in the relative strength that Bitcoin's ever had. And in my opinion, all we've done is move sideways. 
We have not seen weak moves yet. This doesn't line up with what we're seeing. I do expect we're going to get weak moves to the downside. Weak moves is just a strong move to the downside. That's all it is. We haven't seen it yet. I think we're going to get there. This RSI, just like the other RSI I was explaining earlier, if you get to this lower band here at the 30 level, if you get below it, that's the oversold territory. If you get above it, that's the overbought territory. And, and I'll just say this again. I'm going to do it really briefly because I mentioned it before. But just because you get into the overbought, look at, look at this, right? We get into the overbought territory here on Monday the 25th, that week of February in 2013. We don't actually get back out of this territory until April. So February, March, April, you would have missed, if you sold at your first chance of getting into this, you would have missed about a month and a half of strong price actions. You see the strongest moves when we're in these strongest readings, right? Like if you sold it, if you sold it back here, you would have sold at the highest at like 33, you would have missed out this whole opportunity to go all the way up to nearly $260. You would have missed that, you know? So just because we get into it immediately doesn't mean it's time to sell yet. Just because it's the first time we get into it here, sure, maybe we dilly-dally a little bit, you know? It's not the best idea to buy in this time, but it's definitely, in my opinion, not the best time to sell either. It. It is the best time to sell in these overbought conditions, but but not immediately. Generally, and in fact, almost every time, it tends to hang out in these regions for a little bit. If you sell at the first sign of getting into the, these overbought conditions, you're probably not selling at a prime time, okay? Just like if it was oversold, you're not buying at a prime time either. Um, you know, if you, if you sold right here at this, or if, if you bought right here at this 50 level whenever it rejected, you're not buying necessarily at a prime time, although, to be completely fair, buying below last cycle's all-time highs is not a bad idea. I've said this, I think I say this in all my videos. Buying here, you're not going to shoot yourself in, or <laughs> you're not going to shoot yourself in the foot by buying here is what I'm trying to say. You're not going to hit yourself in 5 years if you buy at this current price. Um, though I do think we're going lower. But you could buy now, Bitcoin could drop 50% all the way down to $10,000 and $9,000. Five years from now, we're, we're at whatever, who cares? It's gonna be above what it is now. It's just math. That's, it's not me promising that. It's just the math behind Bitcoin. It's a, it's a stationary coin. Everyone says it's deflationary. It's not deflationary. Right now, actually, there's more Bitcoin being printed every day. It is infl inflationary, but the rate at which that inflation is happening is deflationary. Every four years, that, that supply gets cut in half, okay? Which and, and then for the dollar, the, the inflation rating, even if they keep it at two percent, three percent, right now it's at eight percent. But even if they kept it at two or two or three percent, two percent of a hundred is two. Two percent of a thousand is twenty. Two percent of a million, right? You know, like the, the list goes on. The list goes on. It'd be at twenty thousand. Um, they're never gonna stop printing dollars. They will stop printing bitcoins. It's it's inevitable. So uh, inevitably, mm -hmm. Bitcoin will become stationary. Not deflationary, not inflationary, but stationary. The world's first stationary currency. It's that that's that's the value behind Bitcoin. So it's I'm not I'm not saying that it's me promising that the price is gonna go up over time. I'm saying that it's promised in the code, it's promised in the protocol that it's math, man. It's it's fucking math. Bitcoin will go up over time. And why? Because they're printing more dollars every day. They are they're printing, they can't stop printing dollars. That's the whole debt-based system we lived in, it, it, it calls for that. They can't, they just can't do it. They're going to print more dollars. They're going to keep printing dollars till we die. I don't think the dollar is going away in our lifetime. I'm not one of those guys. I do think Bitcoin's the future. Um, and maybe the dollar will go away eventually, but not in my lifetime. I'm, I'm 27. I'll be, I could die at 107. The dollar will still be here. Okay. Um, I'm not going to promise that, but I would bet, I'd bet a lot on that. Okay. Anyways, a little tangent there. Let's jump back into the RSI. So for the first time, we're rejecting this level. If the last time we saw this, whenever we found support on this level, we were at the very like beginnings of this bull run. If the last time before that we saw this, we went from 3,000 to 14,000. If the time before that we saw support on this, we held support on it continuously. And that was the bottoming range that sent us onto that bull run. What does it mean right now that we found resistance on the 50 and we're below this MA? I don't think it means good things, guys. I, I think it is safe to say that this is indeed a different circumstance of markets, um, uh, crypto markets. It's, it's a different bear trend than we've been in before. Um, 
it's just, it, it's relentless, man. It's very relentless. All of our bounces up, they're very weak. I mean, at the highest here from the low point, we had 33,000. It went all the way up to 50,000. That's a weak bounce for Bitcoin, man. We went from here, we went from about 17,500 all the way up to 25,000. It's very weak, very weak for Bitcoin. It's a bounce nonetheless, but a lot of people are talking about this zone and talking about how, how you know, we're respecting this line, we're respecting this line. Well, not really, man. We're, we're not, I mean, like, look at, look at the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times that we've dipped below it, you know? If we were respecting this line, we would have, and that's not even at the all-time high. If you want the all-time high, boom, we have been res disrespecting it even more. But we, we've not really been respecting this line. We're holding around it, but if anything, we zoom in here, the only thing that we're showing as respect is to the downside. We're holding it as resistance right now. We hold it as support. We had a very weak bounce from it, and now we're holding it as resistance. We've confirmed it as resistance Week after week after week after week after week after week, man. We have we have like literally one, two, three, four, five, six weeks in a row been held below our all-time highs. It's not good, guys. It's not good. I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news, but it's not good. Let's actually I'm gonna bring it at a closing basis and let's just see. Uh we're above it right now. That's 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 not bad. That's actually not a bad thing. Um we have been if if it's not noticeable, I mean it's noticeable to me, we've been disrespecting this area for sure. So it's like being above it to me doesn't mean that much, especially since we've been disrespecting it. We've closed below it. We've opened and closed below it. You know, we've wicked below it several times. There's not a lot of volume. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm not trying to talk about that right now. I'm going to make a video later about this, but I'm trying to talk about the RSI. The main thing with this long-term RSI is that it's more significant than your short-term RSIs. Um, it takes longer to form, so it's going to be more significant. We can see, you know, we're on the weekly here, but we can see if we go to like the daily, ooh, on the daily time frame here, anytime that we're below the 50 on the daily, it's not really a good thing. We broke above it a little bit, but really we started going below it, I'd say like right around here, Friday, December 31st, 2021. Um, let's just see what the price was doing. I know what it was doing. It was already kind of low, but here, yeah, we already, we were in the beginnings of our bear market trend. We held it as support kind of right here. We found a little lackluster bounce and we kind of found resistance on the 123 MA. That's why I really like this stuff, man. That's why I like to use the MA with the RSI. We couldn't even touch this. We found resistance on it. We went below the 50 while we're below the 123. That should suggest that we're going to go lower. And we did. We did. We went above the MA here and we did break above the 50 here. That's that's normally a good thing, but I think it psyched us out, man. I think it psyched us out. That that's you know, that's kind of a bad example of what I'm trying to portray here. But again, we went below the 50, confirmed this as resistance. Even if you bought up here and thought we were off to the races, you could have sold for a loss, which it's as traders, that's on us. We have to sell for losses sometimes. You're not gonna be right hundred percent of the time. It's not about being right or wrong, it's about not losing all your money, and it's about making money. So if you're doing that, it doesn't matter. You could be right nine out of 10 times, still lose money. You could be wrong nine out of 10 times, still make money. It can happen, I promise you. It's not about being right or wrong, it's about managing your risk properly. And even if you bought here, when the indications were bullish, I'm not gonna lie, they were bullish. From, the, from, from this metric alone, they were bullish. But you got psyched out and we went down. All you gotta do is sell for a loss. You know, maybe wait till we got this confirmation of resistance. You could have sold for, a, I don't know, let's say, let's say you put 48,000 in. You could have sold for a $6,000 loss, which sucks. That's a big hit. Don't get me wrong. But you would have at least been able to buy back down here. Okay, you, you would have been alive to trade another day. You would have had funds to trade another day. You wouldn't have had to hold this whole time because you got this confirmation of resistance on the MMA and you're below the 50 on the RSI. That's just, that should suggest that we're going lower. And we did. We did. Just like over here, we're above the MA. We're holding it as support. We held the 50 RSI as support. And boom, we had a nice little rally, right? Right here, we're below the RSI, but we bounce off the 50 on the MA. That That is a classic. With, with this setup, man, that is a classic buy signal. If you bought right there, 37,000, you could have, I mean, you could have sold up here if you wanted, or you could have held all the way up to the top, so you would have at least doubled your money. Um, well, maybe not doubled it, like 90, 80% of your money. Anyways, um, more examples here. We're below the RSI or below the MA. I'm sorry. 
The RSI is still above the 50, so there's reason for hope, but we're holding this as resistance. That should give you some worry. It should give you some worry. Um, you know, maybe to sell, maybe not to sell, whatever. We did go lower, and then eventually the RSI was being held down by the 50. And if you sold it any time that we came up and bounced off the 50 as resistance, you would have been selling at these top areas of this range. So maybe you wouldn't have sold up here whenever it first broke below the RSI, but you could have traded this range based off of this alone. You could have sold every time we bounced and tested this as resistance, and you could have bought near the bot. Like if you put a line on the very first uh, thing down here, you could have bought back down here once, twice again, like quite literally. This isn't financial advice. This isn't me telling you what to do. This is just how I operate these metrics. And I'm showing this because I, f I find it to be helpful most of the time. In times of sideways action, you do normally see more disrespect, but uh, that's, that's not what we're getting at here. So let's just see other examples like this, okay? Even on, you know, we're on the daily here, even on the four hour, I find that this tends to work best on the four hour, the daily, and the weekly, it's not necessarily something for trading, it's, it's more for something for looking at the general economics of the market and like where we stand. But like, let's just look here, you know, we, Right here, we're below the 50, but it looks like we're making a nice run up. Even if you didn't buy down here, even if you weren't convinced to buy down here, which which you could have been, I think, you know, like it's it's kind of like a bottoming area. If we were to draw a line right here on the RSI, you've kind of got a, a dip there, dip there. It's, it's kind of respected. I don't know. Yeah, like over here even, you know, resistance there. Like this this kind of area, the 43 area seems to be aligned. You, you could find that on your own if you want. Um, even if you didn't buy here though, even if you missed most of the move up, as a trader, it, it's not on you to catch the whole move. It's nice when you do, but as a trader, you're just trying to make money and you're trying to not lose money, remember that. So you break above the 50 here on the RSI, you find support on it, and sure, that's up here at 21,000, but you could have been like, okay, this is a buy signal. This is a good buy signal. Buy it at 21,000, you could have had a chance to sell it at 22,000 make like a five or six percent gain a lot of traders would be okay with that you know and then we get we get to this kind of area where we topped out before right maybe you think about taking some profits or selling and this was a big drop don't get me wrong on, on the lesser time frames this kind of stuff doesn't get as respected but what you can see is the rsi here we're below the rsi and we are well below the 50 on or sorry <laughs> We're getting held by the MA, and then we're below the 50 on the RSI here. That should tell you that lower price action is coming. Even if you got fucked on this, you could at least sell halfway through the move to the downside and know that lower prices are coming because, because you have resistance on the MA and you're below the 50 on the RSI. That should tell you lower price action is coming. And it did. It did come. We got above the MA here. We had a nice pump, but it was just a sucker's rally, right? We came back down just as quick as we went up, and you could identify that because... We didn't break the 50 on the RSI. We were up above it, sure, but we didn't break the 50. Boom, came back down. Easy peasy, right? And hindsight's 2020. Don't get me wrong, but it's not always as simple. But but this is generally how I use it. And if if you sold up here and this RSI happened to break above the 50, maybe you consider buying. Maybe you don't. Maybe you look at other metrics besides just these to kind of help make your decision. You know what I mean? Here. We got above the MA, the RSI is, this is a perfect example of what I was just talking about. The RSI is below the 50, but price still continued to go up. It didn't, it didn't really last that long above the 50 uh, RSI here. And you know, the, the RSI did come down, in fact, below the 50 again, but we're still above the MA. This should have been a warning sign right here. Yes, you got a little bounce, but the fact that the RSI came back down below, while the price didn't really move that much, this should have been a warning sign that we were going to go lower. And in fact, we did. We came back up above the MA again. RSI held at the 50. Should have been a warning that we were going to come down. And we did. It's being held down by this 50 again and again and again. We went barely above this. And in fact, if you if you want to look at this, all I'm trying to say really is while we're in a bearish trend, we're going to be below the 50 on the RSI. And anytime we get above this MA, it's probably a good time to sell. If you sold above this MA, I don't care if you sold directly like right here above the MA. If, if you sold above it and bought below it on average, you know, you, you would have probably done okay trading wise. Um, if you're trying to invest, this isn't the method you want to use, but but you can just see time and time again, here, we're holding the RSI as support. It's very clear, right? We're here 
we're holding it as resistance it's very clear um and eventually that'll break eventually but if you bought you know when we were below this line now that we're holding it as support you would have been buying at a good time you bought below this line you would have been buying at a good time you bought below this line you would have been buying at a good time you know it's and you got higher highs higher lows in the price action there's a lot to suggest that we're going up it's not just the rsi and the ma that that help with that but when we're, when we're in an uptrend buying below this ma is a good thing normally when we're in a downtrend selling above the ma is a good thing normally that's how i use it that's how i use it and this is just an overdrawn video to basically illustrate that um we are right now finding resistance in this area we're getting lower highs in the rsi we are getting higher lows but we're below this ma i am bearish for the time being we could come above it but if we're above it and this rsi does not get above the 50 which right now is a ways away it's probably just going to be a good time to sell that's it i don't care if you sell directly at twenty thousand nine hundred, or if you sell if it goes all the way up to twenty three thousand eight hundred. it's probably going to be a better time to sell than it would be to buy um that's all i got i hope i kind of delivered my point i feel like i might have strayed a little bit but that's okay the real thing i wanted to just illustrate is that there is a relation with the 123 rsi with this 123 ma and if you're a trader and you want to use this like i use it it can kind of help things um be figured out i don't know and and i don't know let's just go back for example let's see here i want to use this one as an example actually so we've got this this bounce right and maybe you bought here maybe you bought at twenty one thousand. you could have sold at twenty two thousand. that's that's not a big gain maybe this Maybe this bounce off the 50 and you're above the MA here. Maybe that suggests that we're going higher. Normally, that's a good sign. Don't get me wrong. Normally, not every time, but normally, just like it was here every time, it was it was a good sign. But you got psyched out. A good way to combat this, right? This is why I use two RSIs. I don't just use the long-term RSI. I use the shorter-term RSI. We can pull it up. I haven't even looked at it yet. Let's just let's figure it out. I'm going to take away this MA. I'm going to make it a 10 because I like the 10. I'm going to change the color because I hate purple. I don't get why it's purple. We're going to make it orange, whatever. Um, if we look at this RSI, the short-term RSI, we can see that as price is going up, the RSI is coming down. That is classic bearish divergence. So you can use both these RSIs together to kind of help you determine if it's a good or bad time to buy. Sure, you broke above the 50 here. But you're in overbought conditions on this RSI, not to mention bearish divergence. That should tell you maybe this is a fake out. And that's why I like to use both these RSIs, you know. Again, you broke above this here, but you're in overbought conditions, overbought conditions. And then here you've got a lower high with a higher high, bearish divergence, classic. That's why I find using both these RSIs and pairing it with this MA can be very helpful and constructive. I made this video predominantly about the long-term RSI. Because the last video I made about RSI was about short-term RSI. I think, and the reason I did that was because I wanted to kind of illustrate them separately. I wanted to explain the dynamics separately so that when you do decide to use them together, you're not confused. You're not thinking, and maybe I'm bad at confusing people, man. I'm not good at talking sometimes, but, but it, it should not confuse you as much. It should provide more clarity because you have, you have the know-how on how to use the short-term RSI what it means, what it's identified with, pairing that with the identifications that you can recognize in the longer term RSI. And if you use that with the MA and the price action, man, I think I think that's all the tools. Like I, I, for me, that's the only tools I need. Um, there's a bunch of tools. There's a bunch of indicators, man. You can use not not any one of them is wrong or right. If it works for you, that's really all that matters. That's really all that matters. This is something that works for me. I've never really seen anybody talk about this kind of relationship before with RSIs and MAs. So I'm bringing it to the table. If you want to use it, go ahead. You know how to use it. You click on the indicators. You, you know, you've seen it happen a few times. If you get confused, just go back, rewind. This is not financial advice. This is an indicator advice, right, on how, how to use these indicators. I hope everybody has a good day. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you hate the video, leave a thumbs down. If you have any criticisms at all, um, you don't like my hat, you don't like my face, whatever, please comment below. If you have any support or love that you want to send, please comment below and subscribe for more content. Um, I will post more content every day if I can. 
I, you know, I have a family, I have a day job, and I'm not going to be able to make videos every day, but I will try. If I can, I will. Um, thank you all. Hope you have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye for now.